are starting from first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 it says therefore laying aside all malice now it's interesting that he's not speaking to the unsaved but he's speaking to the saved that means uh, there are men and women in church that are malicious because the word malice comes from the word malicious that means it's not just a Bayesian thing. It is what? It was in the Jewish culture. It was in the earth. There was something called what? Malice. Huh. Something called what? Malice. Huh. The Babylonians like to say, you're too malicious. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. This is Peter speaking. He says there's a revelation that you need. This revelation is the one that's going to make you grow. He said stop the evil speaking. Stop the malice. Stop the deception. Are you with me? I said stop the envy. Stop all of that and rise up in your office. I said rise up in your office. Now, I can tell you this right now. In the realm of the spirit, there's somebody watching me. You know who you are? Let me tell you, you are playing with your destiny. There are folks who are playing with their destiny. They are playing with their destiny. You see, when the laws of time and chance come to you, and there is a job that you're supposed to do by a particular time and the time expires let me tell you that aspect of your calling expires i say that aspect of your calling expires and talk is cheap when it comes to destiny your talk is cheap as newborn babies do what desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby that means there's a growth that needs to happen that means there's a dimension you cannot enter until you grow into that dimension you cannot be prayed into the dimension you got to grow into the dimension if your feet cannot touch the pedals prayer won't help you and guess what the, the car is not going to be changed to you you got to grow into the car right. I said so that your feet can touch the pedals right. well there's some pedals in the spirit that you're supposed to touch to move your destiny to the next level and you got to grow and this revelation of the priesthood will help you grow if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious Woo. He said, say you have tested. Mm. Say you have tested. He said, all, you see, when God begins in your life, he just gives you a taste. My, my, my. I say he gives you a taste. Huh. He gives you a sampler. <laughs> oh, Lord. Some of you are excited on the sampler. Wait when you grow and step into the dimension of it. Woo. What he gave you a sample of, you can live in. What he gave you a sample of, you can breathe in. What he gave you a sample of, you can manifest. But all you've got is the sample. He says, you've come to a living stone. <laughs> Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. He says, what I want you to know is this. He says, he says you've come to Jesus, who people did not give permission for his destiny. Mama, he said, he said, Jesus is destiny. He said, people do not give permission for it. So you're coming to a Jesus who knows what is not to be given permission to. Mary, his mother, was not given a license. You see, destiny is not democratic. Uh, he said, he's telling you that destiny is not democratic. He says, you've come to a living stone who, if it was based on democracy, he would not be chosen. Oh my God. I said, he will not be chosen. He will not, Mary will not be chosen. And Joseph will not be chosen. He said, but you have come. Go back to that scripture. Go back to the back. Go back. He says, but you, he says you've come to a living stone that was rejected indeed by men. Yes. So, 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 so do not elevate your rejection in the presence of a Jesus who understands the rejection. Hey, yeah, yeah. He said, I came to my own and his own rejected him. So rejected by men, but chosen by God. Oh, Lord. Ay, 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 ay. Hey. 
Ha. So the rejection of men does not define who you become, but the choosing of God. I say the choosing of God. And where God chooses, God anoints. Is you've come to him a living stone, ha, rejected indeed by men, but what? Chosen by God and what? Precious. Hallelujah. Next verse. <laughs> and you also as living stones, my God, I would say in that, living stones, all it means is that each one of you, you are a stone in the temple that God is building. You, are, you, you have a part and a place in that temple. You are, you are not a dead stone, you're a living stone. And God is building, it's like everyone in DVA is a what? Is a stone, a living stone that is being, that's being put together to host and carry the ministry like right now we have a uh, living stone uh, pastor sean living stone uh, minister jacinta are you with me we have these are all living stones now right now these living stones have been put together and right now the 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 sound that is coming is coming through them so they have been put together and they are hosting something are you with me they are hosted so he said the stones come together to host something bigger than themselves Oh, can I preach to somebody? He says, but ye also as living stones have been built up into a spiritual house. A holy priesthood. Oh my God. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Take your seat. Mandariza. Now, there is a revelation that must enter your spirit. There's an illumination that must come to your mind that the priesthood was created to bring the rule of the spirit realm to bear on the affairs of men. So the priesthood was created to bring the rule of the spirit realm. Now man was made in the image and likeness of God. So man was made where? In the image of likeness. He said, let us make man and let him have what? Dominion. So man was made in the image and likeness of, 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 of God and man was made to have dominion. Now this dominion means, the word dominion means to rule, it means to reign, it means to manage, it means to control. So man is a dominion creature. So you are made to have dominion. Now, the dominion of man is divided into two parts. There is a spiritual dominion and a natural dominion. Because man is a what? You are a hybrid creature in which you have a spirit that connects with the spiritual world and you have a body that connects with the natural world. So you are a spirit that, that and, and, and you connect to the spiritual world and you are what? A, 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 a physical body that connects what? With the material world. Now in the material world, what God gave you was kinship. And, when, and what God gave you was kinship. And God gave you kinship in the material world. So that in the material world, you'll be able to reign. Yes. So that in the material world, you'll be able to rule. Because in the material world, you need to bring something material. Yes. You need to bring something tangible. So example, Pastor Sean did not bring prayer to sit at that, at, sit at that keyboard. He brought an ability to play keyboard. Oh, can I hear it? I can, I, I, are you hearing me? So, so, so in the material world, you got to bring something. You got to, you got to develop something. You got to bring something to the table. You don't just bring prayer in the material world. In the material world, you bring what? You bring a gift. You bring a product. You bring a service. You got to bring something. My God, you got to bring something. Huh. Hallelujah. Shavariza. So in the material world, you got to bring it. So you find out that God made man to be a king. Now, the king side of it is where you bring, you bring something. And what you bring, God already gave you before you were born. Amen. What you bring, God already put it in your spirit. But it's you, well, he put it in your spirit like a seed. So it's in your spirit like a seed. But even though it's in your spirit like a seed, you now have to develop it. You now have to develop it. You now have to groom it. You now have to cause it to rise. And as you do that, you become a king in that area. 
<laughs> oh, David was a king of music. <laughs> David was a king of fighting even, even before he became political king. He, he, was, he was a king of minstrels. <laughs> I mean, you are the king of minstrels when you are playing exclusively for the head of state. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are the king of minstrel. So he already was a king. He was a music king. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was a music king. Then he became what? A fighting king. Now you're fighting king when you fight people three sizes, three, three times your height. He fought Goliath and beat him. He had a giant killing anointing. So he was, I mean, he, he exceeded Taekwondo. He exceeded Judo. He exceeded jujutsu. Are you with me? His level was higher than jujutsu, higher than taekwondo, higher than all of these levels. So he moved in this. He he moved as a king in the realm of where? As a king in the realm of what? In the realm of what? Fighting and in the army. And the Bible says he led Israel's army. So he became the general of the Israeli army. Before he even became a political king. So the man was a king in three domains. He was a king in music. He was a musical king. Then he became what? A king huh, in the area of what? Fighting. Then he became a political king. Then the man went higher. He became a prophetic king. Because the man began to prophesy. <laughs> and the man prophesied so many things. In fact, in Psalm 83, the man prophesied before Islam was created. All the nations that would fight Israel, he prophesied all of them. Psalm 83, he names each one of them. Each one of them. The man was a deadly prophet. <laughs> the Bible calls him a prophet as well. So the man was a king in four domains. He was a master. I say he was a master. Now, now, now. So in the realm of kings, you got to bring something. I say in the realm of kings, you got to what? Bring something. Now, but, the, but earth is not just a natural world. It's also what? A spiritual world. Mm -mm -mm. So earth is, earth is spiritual and natural. And in earth, the spirit rules the natural. Yes. I said what? The spirit does what? Rules the natural. I said what? The spirit does what? Rules the natural. Oh, are you hearing me? I said the spirit does what? Rules the natural. Now, when it comes to the rulership of the natural, then there's what we call spiritual dominion. And with spiritual dominion, Jesus... Huh. If somebody has spiritual dominion, they also have a rule. So there is a natural dominion and there is what? A spiritual dominion. Now let me show you something in the spirit huh, about spiritual dominion. I just saw that in the spirit. Ah. 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 Lift your hands and begin to pray. Oh my God, I see something in my spirit. Something is about to erupt here. Let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. Oh boy, 2 Kings chapter 3. Let's go there right now. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 3. Okay. Okay. This is a powerful scripture. Okay. Second Kings chapter 3, reading from verse 16. Let's go. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. So he's prophesying. Now Israel has come against the Moabites. Now do you know who the Moabites are? They're the Jordanians. That's Jordan. Okay? So, so Israel came against Jordan. <laughs> Jordan is next to Israel. 
It has the largest, largest population of Palestinians. Okay? Okay. Right? And the word Palestinians come from the word Philistia, which means land of the Philistines. And the word Philistines means barbaric or terrorist. So it means the land of the terrorists. <laughs> go read your Bible. If I, go, go check what's the meaning of Philistine. It will tell you terror, barbaric. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's just continue. So for thus said the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He shall deliver who? The Jordanians, the Moabites into your hands. See, sometimes it helps you to use the language of the, because the same God that delivered them in the last time, he shall deliver them this time. He shall deliver the Moabites, the Jordanians, into your hand. And you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city. And you shall cut down every tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good place of land with stone. Hey! Ha! That means if they have a nice, a nice uh, 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 residential development, you shall mash it up. He get a hassle. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by the way of Eden and the land was what? Filled with water. And then all the Moabites heard the kings had come up to fight against them. All who were able to bear arms and order were gathered together at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning and sun was shining on the water and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. So the Spirit of God is now moving. So, there's, there's, so angels are doing some illusions. Then they said, this is the blood. This is blood. The kings have surely struck souls and have killed one another. That was an illusion. Now therefore, Moab to the spoil. Hey, Jordan to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites so that they fled before them and they entered their land killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it and stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. And, but they left the stones of Ker, Hazareth intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but he could not. The battle, he could not get out. He was cornered. Then he decided, I have tried it in the physical, it can't work. Now I have to go into priesthood. Jesus. Then he took his eldest son, Jesus, who would have reigned in his place and offered him as a burnt offering on the wall. Shabarabaza. Oh, Zavrahiza. And there was an indignation that was released against Israel from the spirit realm. Hey, hey. He did a transaction in the spirit realm with his oh my god you see hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. his eldest son that should reign in his place the heir to the throne he sacrificed him on a demonic altar and when he sacrificed him on the demonic altar the spirit realm responded there's a level of devils that responded and he says there was a great indignation against israel when from where did the ignition come from? That's forces of, of the demonic. Forces of the demonic were released against Israel so that they departed and returned to their own land. That means they were about to go finish it. All of a sudden, some kind of demons, some kind of manifestations, they say, listen boy, this one uh, is a bit too hot for us. Let's go back. That's how he was spared. 
So the man understood. So the king had to move into where? Priesthood. When a battle is too hot for you in the natural, oh boy, Kalabazada. When a battle, oh yeah, 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 is too hot for you in the natural, when you cannot deal with it as a king, the only part of you that can deal with it is as a priest. Oh Lord, listen to me. If you cannot get a husband as a king, you can get one as a priest. You didn't hear what I said. If you cannot pay your debts as a king, then you need to go as a priest. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, because what you see, your kingship has, you see, the limitation of your kingship is mitigated by your priesthood. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, what you, what you don't get by grace, what you don't get by your gifting, what you don't get by your connections, you can now go into the spirit realm and pull it out. Oh. But to pull it out, the thing about priesthood is priesthood only operates by sacrifice. <laughs> so let's now go now. Oh, Brahad is this. Oh, are you hearing me? I said there's something happening here. I said there's something happening very, very important. Jevra Abaharaba says, Lega Harabahosa, Levra Manda Bushe Vidabesha. Now, so let's go back into the scripture. Okay, let's go back into the scripture. Now go back into where it says, where it speaks about spiritual sacrifice. Okay, good. Sevra Ebera says, Lavra Habarabashish. Go further down. Lebra Habarabasa. Where it says, You are. Now, it says now, it says, you are a holy priesthood that has been what? Raised, raised up to offer what? Spiritual sacrifice. Now, so the difference between the Old Testament priest, the Old Testament priest was anointed to offer physical sacrifices. So the Old Testament priest was anointed, but what he offered was physical sacrifices on a physical altar. He offered physical sacrifices on a physical altar. Levra mandeshe vide bozus. Levra mandeshe digadis. He offered what? Physical sacrifices on a what? Physical altar. Oh, I said something in my spirit. He offered what? Physical sacrifices on a physical altar. Now, and those sacrifices were already told him what they should be. So, he was already told, the law of Moses already said, that you are supposed to offer what? Turtle dove for this. Grain offering for this. Animal offering for this. A goat for this. Are you with me? So, he already had the physical formula. Oh, are you hearing me? So the physical formula was already given to him. And so he was anointed to offer up what? The physical sacrifices. In the New Testament, our altar is not physical. So we didn't come here up here and we both took some stones from the quarry and built an altar here. No. So in the realm, so the altar... In the New Testament, it's, it's a spiritual altar. And the sacrifice you give is a spiritual sacrifice. Now, you cannot go and read a scripture that gives you the formula for it. Of how, what type of sacrifice you offer. So, so example. Levra is this. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is love how man has used to borrow this. And I'm broman the zege de bedezish. Avra uza, let's pray in the spirit. Avra hubaras. E garahabasus. E darahara hurbushish. No vrebe de bedebishish. Lega ada hurbushish. Levra haba hurbushish. No, 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 no. Zevra haba harabus. Lega hodoshishish. Now, Zevris, now, in my life, 
there have been areas of massive battle. So in my life, in the realm, I was born with a speech impediment. And I was born with what? I could not speak. So my parents were wealthy. So if it was for speech therapists, and if it was for all of that, I had access to all of that. But my condition could not be solved in the natural. There is no king that had the ability to solve my problem. Therefore, I got healed right about the age of 18 by what? Priesthood. So, my priesthood, because I actually went into the word, spent months meditating in the word on healing, for the revelation of healing, and then I went to a particular service, stated what would happen, and I received the power of God, and I got healed. So, my kinship, oh my God, could not bring my healing. I had to get it by my what? My priesthood. Whew. As what my kinship could not do. You see, each one of us is gifted. And you have what? Your gift grace. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have what? Your gift grace. Now, my gift grace could not solve certain problems. My gift grace. So, so if you're only depending on your kinship, you will suffer. Ha ya 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 ya. Sevre ibereshi. Ada bahore bosedo. No. Levra mando go severe beshe. Levra mando chevre eregose. If you are only, if you are only, if you are only depending on your kinship. You suffer. Because just, you see, here's the thing. Evil people know this. The people that do not know this are the saints. The king of Moab knew this. The king of Moab knew where the ability of my enemy ends. Where the ability of my army ends. Where my ability ends. I need to go to the advantage of the spirit realm. Because the spirit realm will always give a man an advantage. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. The spirit realm will always give a woman an advantage. Lavra hada this. Levra amanambo shivre erebesis. Levra mando shivre erebesh. Hallelujah. Now, this is very, very powerful. It says... That you, he says, you, now he says, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now go, go back to the one above that. Go, go, go to the one above that. Shevra Harabahadasa. Zevra Heribaribeshe. Lavra Oman Dejedeshe. Hallelujah. Now, the next thing that happened to me was this. I was born in a house of what? My father was the leader of the, the, the actual Masonic lodges in, in that part of Africa. And when I was born, hey, boy, when I became born again, I got on all types of demonic attacks. The only way I could stop that was by what? Priesthood. And to break the demonic on my family, God told me. He says, I was praying about breaking the demonic on my family. And God told me, the demonic, it says, Andre Thomas, stop praying for your family. He said, this prayer you're praying for your family is useless. He said, stop praying for your family. I said, what should I do? He said, this family needs one person that becomes a living sacrifice. And that, through that sacrifice, I will open, a door will be opened. From which I can, I can move in this family. And it says, you have to be that door. So all this prayer that you're doing and fasting you're doing for your family right now. So he was telling me, the equation required for your family is that you have to become a living sacrifice and totally devote to my destiny. He said, just as your ancestors went and became leaders in the Freemason. He said, you cannot break what is in your family until somebody becomes a leader in me. Jesus. 
He said, to the depth of the darkness that they went in, except one person rises to the depth, to the height of the light, forget all the prayer. Ain't going to work. Being concerned for your sister, being concerned for your father, being concerned for this thing, it is useless. He said, your family went into a particular realm of darkness. He says, except somebody rises up to the level of the light. So if your family went to minus seven in darkness, you better go to eight in light. If you don't go eight in light, forget it. All the prayer El useless. Shavra Abahas. All the concern, El useless. Zavra Ibazisa. What you've got to do is that you have got to do what? You become the sacrifice. And that's what happened. And do you know? I stopped praying for them. Didn't even bother to pray for them. I just began to pursue my destiny. Stop praying for them. And I began to rise. Until I became a man of God. And when I became a man of God, next thing I checked, my sister is saved. And guess what? She's marrying a pastor. The same sister who abused me for being a Christian, who cursed me for being a sister, is now a man of God's wife, a bishop's wife. Hey! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what happened? I became the living sacrifice. So, so now, so the anointing of that, because he's, he says, so you need to offer it on a spiritual altar. You understand? You need to offer it on a spiritual altar, and your sacrifice is what is spiritual. So you, you're not offering goats and cows. You are offering, so I knew when I was working in church, I knew what I was working for. I knew what God told me. <laughs> That's why I said, <laughs> not everyone understands your sacrifice. They don't need to understand the sacrifice. I understood my sacrifice. I understood my sacrifice was what's going to break open my family. I understood that. <laughs> my brother saved. If I, my brother he came to me, my brother. He, he is the one that got the womanizing gene. My brother. Right? He said, my brother. He said, you know, you know how he got saved? He got saved after I did the HIV test and they have HIV. Because by all, by every rule under the sun, he must have HIV. Based on all the HIV girls he had slept with. Without protection. He said for him to not get HIV. He said when the report came no HIV. He fell on his knees and gave his heart to Jesus. Hey! Now, what was working that saved him? My sacrifice. Hey! My sacrifice. My sacrifice. Because that was what? The equation. So the anointing of the priesthood, the New Testament priesthood, what that anointing does, the anointing reveals to you one of the things, the sacrifice you must make for the transaction in the spirit. Uh -huh. Remember, a priest, now, a, a king develops his gift and takes his allotment. A priest only deals with sacrifices on an altar. That's the only thing a priest deals in. So the language of a priest is the language of sacrifice. The language of a king is the language of developing my gift, taking my allotment. Jesus. That's the language. Now, how many of you know that most of your Christian brothers and sisters, their, their language, the word sacrifice is not even a word that they use. Therefore, 
There is no priesthood in them. And if they give any sacrifices, it is not a joyful sacrifice. It is a sacrifice made with grumbling and complaining. And God says, it is like you offering me a one-eyed pigeon. It is defiled in my sight. Do you know the king of Moab had to just offer his son? Now, how did Israel... How did Abraham become the father of Israel? What did God say? Go on Mount Moriah and offer your son a sacrifice. Yes. Hey! Hey! Sacrifice! So, let me explain to you. What are you sacrificing? Most of you, zero. You cannot sacrifice something and not know it's a sacrifice. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <laughs> I said, you cannot sacrifice and not know. You want to get power. You want to get transactions in the spirit. I'm preaching to you how. I'm telling you the anointing. I'm telling you the way. It's the way of priesthood. Oh. Now, so I remember, Jesus, the other area that the Lord, that the enemy attacks me, the enemy attacks me in my romantic life. For me, my romantic life was not about choosing. My romantic life was the demonic. Like I know another woman of God in which the devil, we were friends and the devil fought us the same way. She has had, she has had four men, she's only four men in her life. The first one, she married him in Bible school. She was a virgin. She married him in Bible school. When he married him in Bible school, he was good in Bible school. When they got married, they went up to Alaska to preach, to preach the gospel and pioneer a church there. They pioneered a church in, in Alaska. Then he told her her breasts were too small for him. Love her. After they married and they opened her in Alaska. She did it. That he prefers a woman with bigger breasts. Are you with me? No. So he did not see the breasts when he proposed. He did not see the breasts when they had the first child. He did not see the breasts when they had the second child. He just developed uh, a, 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 a a discontent for her breasts. And then, and then what did he do? Uh, she then went and said, well, if that is the case, I will, I will help. She went and expanded them. After she expanded them, he said, hmm, I prefer the breast of another woman. So he left her and went with the other woman whose breast he preferred and left her with her now expanded and now left. Jesus. Uh, so that was enough. Next thing. Next, she goes celebrate, she's anointed, she has a financial anointing, moving, she then meets another guy. The guy is a minister who travels all around the world. He preaches the gospel all around the world. And they meet in church, minister the gospel, I met him myself, met him myself, preaches all over the world. They get married. I mean, she's been celebrating for a long time. They actually get married and after the honeymoon, okay, but next day, no functioning. Day after, no functioning. Third day after, no functioning. So she's wondering, huh? Zeda Baziza, is, why, is, uh, uh, why is there no functioning? How with me? So she's wondering. She begins praying about why there ain't no functioning. One week after no function. I mean, after you get married, I mean, come on. I with me. One day, he's on the internet. And then he leaves the internet. And then he goes to the bathroom. And then she just feels, just go to the computer. When she presses it, gay guys. Allah, Ziza. Oh, Lord. Iza, Aza. The second one, the second one, 
He asked, she asked, tell him to go get counseling, everything. The brother, he was a preacher to Ephra Aziza. He can't function. Zavrizaza. So that marriage went done, finished. Then now, she's now, this time she's, we're friends now. Next thing happened. She goes to a service. A woman rises up and prophesies that she will meet a man at this place at this time and this thing. It comes to real to pass. The man is there. She meets the man. The man sits in the back. Man is one of the sweetest men she's ever met. Gets married to the man. Next thing she knows is that she's out traveling. The man empties her bank account. He empties her bank account. Zero. Zero. He, he empties the bank account. Lavra Isa. Then she finds that the man is on prescription medication. Then the man is also on dating sites. You think Lazi her money. So that was something. And all of them. Now, she said, what she told me, she said, I cannot believe that Satan sent somebody to prophesy to me. <laughs> A lie. A person came up and prophesied to her. A woman, you meet a man, and this and this exactly happened. She said, because if that was not the case, I wasn't marrying because I wanted confirmation. I got confirmation, but the confirmation was from the demonic. The man was demonic. So, that was, this was, a, now this woman, let me explain something to you. Of all the women born of men, born of women in this generation, Nobody has a higher revival anointing than her. Pastor Rodney Hart Brown would say, who is the father, who is the leader in the area of revival, says there's no woman on the earth that has more revival unction than this woman. After three devastations, it just killed her. Shivered us. Now, the only way that woman could have overcome that is priesthood. Now, no, she went and married a man that was 30 years older. Fourth guy. Shevra Abazabarizi. Hirabaziz. Ezabaha. Edakabaja. Ezabribadiza. Ezabarizi. Yes, Eva Abbasis. But the global ministry that she had, what she had was it was just she it was it was just yeah yeah. I don't she 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 hasn't recovered back. I mean fully since. Very demonic. Now, now I now the reason why that story was so real to me, because her problem was also my problem. So the demonic, because the demonic knew that for this ministry to be done, I need, I am a father of a movement. I need to be married to a woman who can be what? A mother of the movement. Jesus, the demonic, the demonic. I, I cannot tell you my stories, but I can tell you. I didn't make mistakes just by, you know I have a wisdom. But let me tell you, boy, it came nice. Hey! Hey! The packaging. Ah! It was a lit packaging that my wisdom could not detect it. It was after I got the second hit that I realized this, this is a common problem. Because in my heart, I've done everything right. Everything I knew to do, I've done. Then, that's when I was taken in a vision. And the Lord began to explain to me some mysteries. And he told me what to do. And how to do it. And how to maneuver. And how to break the curse that was over me. And how to break that thing. And when it broke, in less than three months, Prophet has appeared. So, that was only 
broke up a priesthood. I'm telling you, being a prophet, you see, now being a prophet is the area that, that I'm a king. I'm a king in the prophetic. I'm a king in wisdom. And I'm a king in entrepreneurship. That's, that's the king side of me. That's not the priest. <laughs> That's not the priest. Oh boy, that, that's not the priest. That's the king side of me. So I can be a min. She was a minister, the leading female minister in the world, in the world, in the realm of revival. Leading, and also had a financial anointing. Wealthy. She's the kind of woman that has a type of unction that people go up to her and give her hundred thousand US. She had. She was a, and then she. Hey, listen, I, in my personal life, I've never met anybody who has that level of giving anointing. She can preach giving, and people will run up and give their shirt in the offering. Their stilettos, their, 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 she has the anointing serious. Anointed woman, carabas. Holy, sanctified, everything. But only that's it. in her gift she could not conquer it. In her gift she could not conquer it. Zavra. She could only conquer it by what priesthood. Now, do you know who and her were actual compatriots? Pastor Paula White. They were like compatriots. Now, how did Pastor Paula conquer it? Because Pastor Paula was able to conquer it. You know what she did? Uh, you know before, her man of God was Bishop T.D. Jakes. Hey, uh, but what happened? She switched. She switched. And where did she switch? She switched to Archbishop Danka Williams. Prayer, altar, fire. She said, she said, she explains, every kind of demon that could be cast out was cast out. She said, even the husband, the, the husband that she married, the man said, there's no way any demon could stay on me. <laughs> After what I passed through with Bishop. <laughs> hey, love her mother. I, 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 you see, what, hey, you see, there's, 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 there's no way. There's, there's no way. So she, she, she conquered it. By priesthood. Because she knew what, she understood what was against her. That she knew, this I can't handle it. And she had to now elevate into a dimension of priesthood to be able to deal with that. Jesus. Ha. So the anointing of priesthood is an anointing that tells you the sacrifice you've got to make and the altar you have to raise. Hey, hey. Lava Hada, Mazisa. Whoo, Shavara. It tells you that. That is why you have pastors who, they are good pastors, but their life is a mess. Because <laughs> it's because hey Laba that he can be a good pastor but his personal life complete mess why is that because those battles can only be won by priesthood but he's only moving in his kingship anointing he's not moving in his priesthood anointing so if you have your life now, hi. Let me explain. What happened to some of your great ministers? What happened to prophets when it's a minor? Let me just explain what happened to you. Prophets when it's a minor, don't condemn her. Her priest, her kingship anointing was up here, but her priesthood anointing was down here. That means her kingship anointing was higher than her priesthood. 
And when your kingship anointing is higher than your priesthood, when Satan appears in your private life, you cannot deal with it. So in your kingship, you go and tackle demons over continents. And then these continental demons appear in your private life. But your priesthood is too low to handle them. Chevre Eberesis. Lavra Abarisis. Lever Adamandes Eberesis. Lever Abarabasis. So that's why you can see people in their gift remarkable. It's how you can see. You can see. You, you, you actually see it. You see, okay, female CEOs. Amazing CEOs. See, you see, lead, lead massive companies. But their private lives, hey, you see what? Total mess. Because they are moving, because you see, to move in kinship, it requires what? Diligence. Understanding your design. <laughs> Developing. Harness, harnessing your craft. Moving in that unction God gave you. But priesthood, ah, that is a, in fact, those ladies normally, they have a prayer group <laughs> that prays for them. Hey? They cannot offer your spiritual sacrifices. The king of Moab had to offer his own son by himself. Laras. That's the anointing. So, the things you want to break. So, you need to know what can be broken by me just taking territory as a king. And what can, let me explain. Lord, Lord explain to me. He says, he said, my son, he said, tell the people, Lavras, that Moses brought the people out by a prophetic anointing. But the people crossed over into Jordan by a priestly anointing. Because what happened in Jordan, how did, to take your land, it was, the God said, get, let the priests take the what? The Ark of the Covenant and step into the Jordan. And then the Jordan was put open. Then he said, he said, son, tell them how did the walls of Jericho fall down? Did the walls of Jericho fall down by Moses or Joshua making a pronouncement? No. I told the priests and the people to circle the land, to circle it. It was priestly anointing that brought the walls down. Oh my God. It was a priestly anointing. They, they, they did a transaction in the spirit realm that brought angels to bear to cause the walls to fall down. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Woo. Lara, what type of walls are you dealing with? What type of walls? The anointing of priesthood that will now tell you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Grabba Hazish. It will tell you. It is only you that know your situation in the fullness. Love rises. Mm. Let's go to First John chapter two. First John chapter two. Lola. Oh boy. First John chapter two. I feel such an unction here today. Oh hallelujah. First John chapter two. Let's go there. Now you're going to understand the scripture. You see, every believer has received. The anointing of the king and the anointing of the priest. That is the believer's anointing. So you receive that anointing and then the anointing now grows. Now for you to understand, it's a generic word. When we say the anointing increases, technically the anointing cannot increase, but yes, it increases. What do you mean? The anointing is God endowing you with authority. Is God authorizing authenticating and, and, and enabling you to do a function. So when God authorizes you, the author, if you are authorized, if, 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 huh, Minister Jacinta, 
is authorized to arrange music by heaven that authorization to arrange music cannot increase she's already been authorized if she's been authenticated to arrange music that authentication cannot be increased but the third part can be increased the enabling so that means the level of enabling can increase and increase and increase and increase so there's a part of the anointing that doesn't increase but the enabling part of the anointing does what increases i i, I mean i am authorized to be a prophet of fresh anointing to the church i'm authenticated to be a prophet of fresh anointing to the church that's there's no increase in that but the ability of that office can what increase are you with me so that's the technicality of it so it's, i'm sure so you understand it live right now the anointing you are already authorized to be a priest you are already authenticated to be a priest and a king but what can increase in you is the enablement the ability for you to now hear the ability joshua had to hear march around the walls of jericho seven times <laughs> <laughs> and then on the seventh day march seven times and let the priests blow the trumpet that was the spiritual sacrifice and while you're marching do not talk you see that was you see that was now a spiritual sacrifice that had to be done for the walls to come down When Bishop David Oedepo, one of the greatest men of God alive, when his wife was dying, done every single thing they can. The skin was peeling off her. Dying in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What did he do? He did everything he could. Then he brought a seed of one million US dollars to the altar of his own church. you're not here with me La Vadiza. he won he, he won seed one million US dollars and put it for a seed for his wife Calabasas and something broke open his wife is now preaching and what happened is something no happened the anointing opened up something in the spirit realm. Yes. Then he was home and he began, the Lord led him to some scriptures. And while he began to pray the scriptures, at the, at the apartment in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she was dying, a snake appeared. You know snakes are not found in Tulsa, Oklahoma apartments. They killed the snake. As they killed the snake, she began to recover from that day on. That means it was by a demonic altar. And he said that right about the same time his wife got sick, when he got into his office, inside the cupboard, because I've been to that office, inside the cupboard, they found a cobra. How the cobra got left, they don't know. They killed it. Woo! Love Lisa. Oh, are you hearing me? Shakala has this. So, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, the church in Barbados is ignorant on priesthood. Completely ignorant on priesthood. And the Bible says you are born to be a holy priesthood. To offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices. Now, do you know for the priest, every day there should be a sacrifice? Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Every, 
Every day, something must be burning on the altar. Savras. Levrasis. Lavras. Today, ha, revelation. I say revelation. Today, revelation. Levrasis. For you shall rise up. You shall rise up. Mambrasis. For too long, you have been bound. Hmm. Okay. Let's go on to the scripture. Okay, let's go all the way down. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's go. Verse 27. First John chapter 2, verse 27. It says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So it says there's an anointing that you got born again that you received from him. That anointing is the anointing of kinship and the anointing of what priesthood. Now it tells you something about this anointing. It says, and you have no need that anyone teach you. Now, when the Bible says that, it seems to be a contradiction because God is the one who raised up teachers and raised up pastors and raised up prophets. And right now, I'm the one teaching you about priesthood. So how is he saying that when you receive this anointing, this anointing, you have nobody to teach you, no one to teach you? No. This is the anointing of priesthood. I do not need to teach Lorraine. Or Lo I, know, I know teach Laurel. I do, not, I do not have to teach you. You know your condition. The sacrifice you need to make. That anointing will teach you what you need to do. That's the priesthood anointing. See, the priesthood anointing will come. And that priesthood anointing, it will teach you. This is what you got to do to break it. That anointing came. My pastor, my, that anointing came and said, Andre, your dad led the Freemasons. Your granddad led the Freemasons. He said, in your generation, nobody has ever served me. He said, you have nobody in your lineage that has served me. The only woman that tried to serve the Lord was my aunt from my mother's side. And as soon as she tried to serve the Lord, she became half mad. Yes, she had, she, had, she had a nervous breakdown. And the demons of the family manifest to her. And she will go outside looking for a cutlass to chop the spirits. All that was happening is the spirits of, of, of the family rose up against her. And she could not, she did not have the priesthood to deal with that. So nobody, she said, nobody on your father's side or your mother's side has ever served me. So he says, son, you trying to pray for their salvation is a waste of time. I need somebody who is going to lay down themselves for this family. When I got saved, they threw me out of the house for getting saved and becoming a preacher. Are you with me? Are you with me? Calabasis. He says, somebody needs to become a sacrifice. I was, do you know how old I was? I was 19. So a 19-year-old boy was taught in order, he said, don't even bother with your brothers and sisters. Don't even witness to them. Don't even tell them about Jesus. It's a waste of time. Because you are dealing with these demons that will appear to me every night. He said, what you need to do is you now need to grow to the level your family went into darkness. And when you do that, as you do that automatically, it will cause a chain reaction. That's what happened. Nobody taught me that. Nobody had to teach me that. But well, here's the problem. When the anointing rises up in you and begins to tell you the offering that you have to give, the sacrifice that you have, and the Lord told me, he said, in order to do that, son, this is your sacrifice, you need to leave university. So I quit university. Uh -huh. I quit university. Yep, I quit. 
and I went full time in the ministry. I quit university. <laughs> Think I didn't make sacrifice. I quit. Love Raisa. Woo! You see, some of you think Jesus Christ did not die. He died on the cross to take the curse of the law. But there are things you have to work out yourself. Jesus Christ died as our high priest. He offered up his own blood. He, didn't, he, he said you are now priests as well. But you are a priest for your own life. I cannot be a priest for Troy's life. I cannot even be a priest for my wife. There's some things she's going to have to deal with as her own priest. As her own priest. The things she has to deal with by herself as her own priest. She can us. So the anointing of priesthood. It says, but that same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true, it is not a lie. The Holy Ghost came to me. He said, you don't need to, he said, all this prayer that you're praying, about activating these giftings in you. Stop it. It's useless. Take some dollars. <laughs> Take some what? Dollars. <laughs> See, what is required here is what? Dollars. Not prayer. Not laying on the hands. It requires what? Dollars. Woo! And when the dollars hit, the anointing came. I needed to send dollars to connect with my man of God. I needed a financial sacrifice. Do, let me explain. To all those ministers who are listening to me, this is what Bishop Oredebu says and my dad says. He says, God did not send us to be tax collectors or tithe collectors because most men of God, they're simply tithe collectors and offering collectors. They don't give themselves. So if you are simply a tithe collector and an offering collector, in your own life, you'll be defeated. <laughs> because in your own life, you, your own self, need to give. My spiritual father has twice emptied, he and his wife have emptied their bank account and brought it to zero. own priesthood that's his own his own priesthood oh my god ha, yeah 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 ha shabras now here's the thing the reason why nobody and, and that is why no this the priesthood anointing nobody is allowed to interfere and teach you the sacrifice to give. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that will show you the, the level of your problem. There was somebody I was praying for. When I was praying for them in this church, praying for them in the church, and as I was praying for them, 
I said, Woo, I can see the problem. I said, somebody very close to you wrecked another person's home. A woman said, it's my mother. I said, well, I see the realm of the spirit where the wife issued a curse on the woman and all her daughters. And it was a justified curse because it wrecked the home. You think you just break down like this? You, you think you just break down like this? You think you just say, Father, forgive what happened in the name of Jesus. I now receive. No. There has to be what? There has to be what? To break that. There are things I know my parents. I remember my brother and I and my sister, we came to the conclusion there's something wrong. We have dealt with everyone on that side. But there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And it was blocking my younger brother. And my sister said, Andre, he says, you have been able to overcome it by the anointing. I've been able to overcome it, but my, our younger brother has been affected by this spirit. And the entire family, we went on fasting and prayer. And then the Lord showed me after list, I was listening to God. And after the session, I went in the spirit and I saw something on one of the properties. And the Lord began to speak to me about that what needed to happen. To break and the sacrifice that needed to be raised to break that thing coming from my mother's side of the family. And we as a, we went on this, what God gave me, the family did it, and we broke it. <laughs> There's an anointing here. Many of you know fully what you have done. And some of you know fully what your parents did or some of the things they did. <laughs> and you know it is wickedness. And the Bible says, I set before you this day life or death. Choose life that you and your seed may live. That means what you do affects your seed. So what they did affects you. Now you can break it. But to break it, you got to break it as a priest. Are you understanding this? Uh -huh. So today... An anointing is going to come on people, Jesus. Where God is going to take people into visions, into dreams, into revelations. Where he's going to speak to you about what you need to do. You see, there, there are some of you, God does not have all of you. Or all of your possessions. Lavaris. Oprah is is to this man that is liga has sis some of you don't understand huh? the lord said let's share this before i close and then we're going to take our offering and then we're going to have a mighty release of the anointing one of my sacrifices was this there's a man of god in this country Years, who his ministry and himself they spoke against the Bible college that God had me raise that trained over 2,000 students and one day at a sanctification service 
there was a lady one of my students began running from the back to the front from the back to the front from the back to the front she was falling on the altar because the anointing of holiness had hit the place she the anointing was so strong and then she went to the back and began to speak to one of my my ministers the guy called me he says dr thomas he says this one is too much for me i don't even want to hear it you have you, you you tackle it so she calls me she's having an affair with this extremely high profile man of god in the country and the context of it is very serious because they go together as a husband and a wife she goes with her husband for counseling and he ends up sleeping with her and because she's not coming to bible school she decides to stop and the last time he raped her and he's also affected by a demon that even when she's dry, when she's walking down the street he's following her in his car and if i call his name everybody will know the time newspaper but this guy had attacked me so she came and confessed and I knew that for me to save him from being embarrassed and the body of Christ would now be for me a sacrifice because my enemy landed in my hands see some of you don't understand that my enemy landed in my hands All I had to do was this press. He will not be able to preach in any country when I'm finished. I just have to press. But God told me, it's your, it's your opportunity to give mercy. And I called him. And I called the lady. And I said, man of God, with, with uh, I meant it, man of God. I said, this lady has explained to me what has happened. And I said, I perceive in my spirit that if this doesn't stop, it's going to be in the news. On the newspaper, on CBC, on Voice. And it's going to affect you, your family, the church, and the entire body of Christ. I said, this is an opportunity to stop. I said, I honor you as a man of God. And this lady is coming to my Bible school. I believe this is a divine opportunity to stop it. He said, you know, he looked at me for the first time with respect. Because he knew I was giving him grace. And he said, thank you, I will stop. And we, and we both, we ask God for forgiveness. They both ask God for forgiveness. And he said, I'm finished. I'm finished because this will be devastating. It will be devastating to her husband, to everything. Now, let me explain something. Say, why didn't you call the husband and tell the husband? Now, let me explain something. Let me tell you something. There's a saying in Africa. There's a tooth that if it is spoken, it will scatter the village. There's a truth, if I spoke it, somebody may die. So not all truth should be spoken. Only idiots speak truth that should not be spoken. <laughs> so wherever you, you, there's some truths that should never be spoken. Because the if people, he's what he did, he went and ministered in the church, then skillfully he moved on from the church. He moved on from the church, and the church has gone forward, and the church was preserved, the body of Christ was preserved. I met her. She's in with another ministry. She's working. 
and everything moving. Now, for me to do that was actually, it was a sacrifice too. Because I had my enemy and I could have mashed him up. <laughs> and I knew it was a test. Do you hear me? So, there are all kinds of sacrifices. Are you here with me today? Lift your hands. Karas, there's a thick and on here. Those of you that are watching me, there's sacrifices that God is going to be speaking to you to give. Financial, prayer, Sivri Ibadish, Libra Abadis, Egarab Sibiris, Worship, Sivri Ibadis, all manner of sacrifices. The anointing will manifest to you. It will manifest to you. It will manifest to you. It will manifest to you. Okay, let me not talk about the offerings. And then we're going to spend some time praying and then. And they will finish. Wow, service is different today. Let, let's turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Wow, I feel such an annoying here. Mark chapter 14, quickly. Who needed to hear this message? Let's read together. After two days, it was the Passover, and the priest of the unleavened bread, and the chief priest and the sacrifice sought how they may take him by trickery and put him to death. And they said, not during the feast, lest there be an opera of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman coming, having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Now, this woman now came with her own sacrifice. Ooh. So, the anointing has taught this woman, what I need to do to break is I need to go and offer this to Jesus. Do you understand that? So, the woman comes... Huh. having a, an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spike now. Now we know it was a year's wages. Huh. But then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Jesus. Next. There were some who were indignant amongst themselves. Why was this fragrant oil wasted? Because it was very poor. So there are people who your sacrifice will anger them. They will say, why would she take a Mercedes Benz and give it? Why would she Fast for 45 days and look like a scarecrow. No, why? You know, you, you know what I'm you see, 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 so this was a financial offering. The financial offering made. Here's the amazing thing did they own the oil? Was it their money? It was whose money? Her money. Yet she gave her money and it made them vex. Oh boy. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's why we were, we were dancing to a song today. My money, money. My money, money. If I, if I buy Visachi with it, it's my, it's my money. If I buy sushi, it's my money. If I pay my tithe, it's my money. If I give sacrifice, it's my money. That's the song. My money, my money. It is my money. 
Whatever I do with it is my money. Hey! Why? So the people say, I, I, I'm against this. What type of demon in you is being angry at other people's sacrifice? It's a demon in you. Because it's not your money. If you don't want to sacrifice, that's your business. There's somebody else's sacrifice. And the Bible says they were indignant. They were vexed. They were highly annoyed. Why was the fragrant oil wasted? Why did she take $50,000 and give it to a man of God? That, that's, look how stupid idiot woman is that. Crazy woman. Stupid. Idiot. I with me. You saw something said. Huh? Totally vexed. And what was done? Next. <laughs> for it might have been sold more for 300 denarii and given to the poor. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. So now they are poor advocates for the poor. I, I, I would be. They, they, they now lead the Ministry of Social Transformation. <laughs> the Social Welfare Department, they're the leaders of it. And said so they criticized her sharply because she giving to the poor is not giving at an altar. Wow. Uh-huh. Giving to the poor is not giving to an altar. That's why giving to the poor has a different protocol. It says, he that giveth to the poor, lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay. That means giving to the poor does not endanger spiritual transactions. The transaction that it does is this. He that giveth to the poor, lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay with interest. So you give one, one, one thousand to the poor, the Lord gives you back one thousand two hundred dollars. One thousand two hundred dollars based on the interest rates of heaven on that day. But you cannot give to the poor and your daughter get free from cocaine. Is, is that tied to giving to the poor? Have you seen that giving to the poor? So we have these false people who say, ha, 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 where all the burdens should be taken and just give it to the poor people. The woman, and you're going to read about the woman, the woman was a... Yeah, she was a prostitute. And the woman was breaking something of her life. Because, because in, another, in, in the other renditions, they said, does Jesus not know the type of woman this woman is? And he's allowing her, her, her to touch his head? He's allowing her to touch his head? The woman was giving her money at the altar. Now, it is obvious the anointing told the woman what to do because the anointing told the woman, take the money and go buy anointing oil and anoint Jesus for his burial. Jesus had not been anointed for his burial because the time had come for Jesus to die. This woman was now about to be elevated from prostitute to a woman of God. By a transaction on the altar. With her money. Jesus. Oh my God. And they criticized her sharply. Next verse. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. Jesus. Who? Oh. Now, who would have trained that woman? <laughs> Did that woman know Bible prophecy? No. The Spirit of God talked to that woman. Those who mock the offerings of others have a demon inside of them. 
It's a demon that hates people making transactions. And he said, for you have the poor with you always. He said, please, don't start this poor business here. I will go and live in heaven for 1,000 years. There will still be poor people to give uh, this thing to. So, so, so Jesus said, please, don't bring poor here. How many of you heard that? We should be giving this everything to the poor. Jesus said, please, th this is not given to the poor right here. This woman is going a transaction to break the curse of her, to lift her into levels. Look what he said. He said, but the poor you have always. And whenever you wish, you may do to them. But me, you do not have always. There is this opportunity to break this curse over her life is not this 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 moment next she has done what she could and she has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial where did the woman learn that it was the anointing that taught her and said the woman wanted to break out of her lifestyle the anointing said the way to do this go and buy that oil and do that if she had explained it to anybody that thought she's crazy she's mad next verse it says as surely i say unto you this is the level she, she reached wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world what this woman has done will be told as a memo that woman now became in fact not one of you my spiritual daughters uh wherever the gospel is preached your name would it's actually mentioned that woman with what she did she didn't even break her curse she landed a eternal she became an eternal celebrity Boy, they, 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 listen, that means that woman is like her, her, her sacrifice was like a billion dollar offering. <laughs> that woman, what that woman transacted in the spirit, she transacted from prostitute to a woman wherever the gospel. We have songs. I brought my oil. In my alabaster box to pour we have songs that we sing about alabaster box that's the woman that's the alabaster woman she broke it with an offering a sacrifice so you think sacrificing financial sacrifices are only for financial returns absolutely not the woman to get get financial return she became an eternal celebrity. The last 2,000 years, everywhere the gospel is preached, she's mentioned. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went to the chief priest to betray him to them. You know why? The one who got the most vexed was Judas. Judas was my God, boy. Why did she just bring the cash? Now, here's the thing. So he can carry it away. The Bible says, so that, 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 that sacrifice is what opened Judas to the devil. Do you see that? It is that. You want to know when did, when did Judas had opened for, for the spirit of betrayal? Then. What would have happened if before she gave the sacrifice, she came to now Judas, who was, who was part of protocol? Protocol, uh, Minister Judas, uh, I have uh, 300 denarii. I want to uh, buy some spike nerd for profit. What would Judas say? Judas would say, What? No, 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 no. In fact, right now, 
Let's wrap it up and give me for the man of God. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. What? <laughs> what? You see that? So you need to understand there are sacrifice enemies, sacrifice thieves. The man became so offended, he left and betrayed Jesus. Let's stand. That is why. Now, there are people who don't understand what the scripture is saying. That's why people get very religious. The reason why it says in offering, let your right hand not know what your left hand is doing, is not saying it because your giving needs to be anonymous. Nobody must know what you gave. No. What it's telling you is that your left hand may tell your right hand to not do it. <laughs> your right hand may curse you your left hand for giving it. <laughs> your left hand may decide to betray you. You say, wait, wait, wait. You, right now, I'm your neighbor. And I'm not, and I, I'm struggling. If I, I've been eating uh, biscuit and cheese for the last week. Then you told me that you gave $10,000 to a man of God. Hey, 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 hey. You, I'm struggling here. You gave 10,000 to the man of God? Ah! All of a sudden, you turned that woman into an enemy. Because so, so it's not that. Because that's why it says your right hand, when you're operating in this, you need to keep silent and just do what you have to do. Oh! That's what it is. Look at how many people became mad at the woman's giving. That's what he's talking about. It's not that, it's not the saying that, oh, your giving must be, no, it's must, it particular. if you're giving $10, it doesn't need to be secret. Just take your $10, $10, and drop it in. I mean, I'm telling you, you'll get no persecution. <laughs> I guarantee you, there'll be tested, there'll be no persecution, no one will attack you, there'll be no betrayal for giving $10. But take your car that just came from Japan and take it and say, the Lord says I need to give it to the church. And then your sister has been using bus for the last two years. Tell your sister that you gave that money to church. Ha! The level of persecution <laughs> that will hit your life. You would wish you never ever ever saw a car. <laughs> okay? That is what the Bible is talking about. Oh, who gets this in the spirit? <laughs> 